Welcome dreamers and happy Wednesday. In our last video, we took a look at themed building in Dreamworld. We saw how you could unlock new building assets that, you know, had certain themes like, you know, castle, stone, as well as Roman architecture build pieces. And then we started our own build and saw how we could, you know, mix and match and combine the different, you know, themed build pieces to make a unique looking build. Our mountain cave base is still there and the front door is wide open for exploring. Today though, we'll be going over a different way to build in Dreamworld. Before we talk about that though, a very quick reminder that Dreamworld is in early access currently. If you head on down to the description of this video, there'll be a link to Dreamworld's website. At the website, you can find uh, a free trial you can download to try the game. And if you like what you see in today's video and you like what you play on the trial, you can purchase Dreamworld. So link in the description to check that out. Well, let's talk about today's video. So the type of building we'll be talking about today is going to be floating builds. That's right, builds that are suspended midway in the air. We'll have a look at two different ways in which you can actually go about building floating bases, as well as a few designs you can use to go about building floating bases in Dreamworld. Way back when we checked out player builds, uh, we actually were able to see a floating build that was actually on the city of Elysium. This was that star base that was suspended, you know, kind of near the building with the airstream that went all the way up to the top. But today we're gonna be looking at how we can make our own. However, before we go over the actual building portion, I wanna talk about something else. Dreamworld's most recent update has added a few pretty cool things that I just wanna go over real quick. There's been a few key features added. Uh, first of all, being, you know, an update updated map system. If you click M, it'll bring you to your map and you'll notice that the pinging system has been upgraded as well as the, you know, the way you explore your map is now upgraded. It's now a lot easier to, you know, look around your map and, you know, navigate around your map and look at some of the discovered lands that are, you know, farther off around you so you can determine, you know, where you want to go and, you know, what is in what direction if you want to travel far. As for the marker system, it's now a bit easier to actually put down markers on your map. And any markers you already had placed down if you had played Dreamworld already are actually still there. So you're not going to have to go around, you know, re-putting down all your markers. Another thing that's been added is actually a tweaked mob system at night. Previously at nighttime, you'd be attacked by enemies most of which were boars, whether it be tiny boars or, you know, regular sized boars, boars would, you know, rush you and try and kill you at night. However, now a lot more mobs have been introduced at nighttime. Now you'll encounter, you know, skeletons, skeleton archers, as well as ice boars in the wild if you roam around at night. It's a bit more of a challenge and you actually get some different loot now. From skeleton archers, you can actually get wood bow drops. I myself have quite the collection of wooden bows piling up. And you'll also be able to collect some ammo from the skeletons, which is pretty awesome. I know that I've needed to stock up on arrows for a very long time. <laughs> now, along with the new, you know, mobs that have been introduced at nighttime, there's also a new enemy that's been introduced into the game. Packs of wolves can now be found in the tundra with their own wolf dens. I actually had one spawn right in front of my tundra base, which was an interesting surprise when I walked outside. <laughs> These wolves will drop wolf pelts as well as, you know, raw meat. They're pretty tough to kill these wolves, uh, but if you, you know, solo them, you could, you know, take them out one by one. And then when you actually, you know, clear out the dens, you can go and farm the dens. You can get animal bones, raw meats, and even uh, ice pelts from farming these dens. And one last thing I want to kind of talk about that's been, you know, updated is that now with crafting weapons that are unlocked, you know, after you discover the tundra, you have to use materials from the tundra to make, you know, certain weapons and, you know, tools. The tundra deers have now become a little bit more important. Uh, an item that they drop now, which is actually deer antlers, is now used to craft, you know, a, a couple tools and some gear that are at the benches. So there's been some progression tweaks to Dreamworld as well. Now that we've gone over some of the new features of Dreamworld, though, let's actually get into the building portion of this video. So I mentioned there's two ways to go about building floating bases in Dreamworld. The first is going to be by building up into the air if you don't have smelted white crystal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on top of my barn here and I'm going to build a massive staircase going up 
way up in the air. I want to make sure that the build is going to be above the conifer trees I placed, you know, on top of my roof. This way it doesn't poke through the trees and look weird. I want to have plenty of space to build what I'm going to build. All right, now that we have a massive winding staircase built all the way up into the air, let's get to farming our materials. For the first build we're gonna do, I'm gonna use polished conifer wood. It's probably my favorite type of wood to use in the game. I like kind of like a darker wood that also has a shine to it. So conifer is absolutely perfect. All right, here we go. Let's start with the very first foundation piece. We're gonna start with a very basic, you know, rectangular foundation for the build. We're also gonna use these triangular foundation pieces because I want the ends of the build to be pointed, you know, I want it to kind of look like a ship. All right, we have our foundations down. Now let's start building the actual walls of the base. I'm gonna use these pillars combined with fences because I want the build to feel more open on this first level. While we're putting on the ceiling for the first floor, just a reminder that uh, make sure you leave a way to get back on your build. If you don't have smelted white crystal, I covered up my staircase here and was not able to get back on. So yeah, <laughs> don't seal up your staircase route up. Now that the ceiling is done, we're going to mimic the fencing and pillars on the other side. I'm also going to add these doorways at the ends of the ship to keep a more open concept. And there we go, that's our first level already done. Now for our second level, let's make sure to open up a hole in the ceiling to actually put a staircase down. Otherwise, how are we gonna get up and down? For the second story, I'm gonna use a lot of these window frames. This way we can see out of the walls a little bit better, but also keeping this floor more enclosed. I want it to be different than floor one. I'm then gonna put two staircases down that lead to the next floor. I could have mimicked the staircase, you know, from that led from floor one to floor two and put it in the middle, but I wanted to create some symmetry, you know, in this floor.
And there you have it, our third floor. Look at the view that you can see from up here. Wow. I'm gonna enclose this floor with a roof, but also keep it more open, you'll see what I mean. And there you have it. That is the entire floating ship build. We'll do a walkthrough right now so you can actually see everything for yourself. The views you can get from up here are really, really nice, which is why I allowed for many different, you know, openings and, you know, ways to walk out of the ship and stand on open platforms and have open concepts. I wanted as many angles as possible to be able to see out into the land. Also, I totally could have done some interior decorations in this ship. However, today we're just going to keep it simple and focus on, you know, how to make the build float. And let's actually talk about how it's able to float. Basically, builds in Dreamworld don't really need to be tethered to the ground. You just can play stuff in open air, which allows for you to make builds on the ground and just suspended in air. Now that the base is done though, let's go ahead and destroy the staircase, which we can do because it's not supporting the base stability wise. Now to finish up the build, let's actually use smelted white crystals. This will allow us to fly and fix up the bottom portions of the base. The foundations have, you know, some gaps in them that don't really look super pretty. So I'm gonna fill those with fences. This will make the build feel more complete. And there you have it, that is our floating ship base. Now let's try to do a, you know, a very small, simple build just using the ability to fly. To do this, we're gonna use a resource called Black Brick. For that, you're gonna need mountain stone and shale to actually craft it at the bench. So let's go farm some. Alright, we have enough. Let's craft some black brick. We'll build the second base over the lake here, you know, kind of right next to our ship build. It'll just be a simple gazebo. Although the black brick is expensive, I'm actually a really big fan of it. I might use it in a lot more of my new builds.
And just like that, we were able to use smelted white crystals to build a small base. It wasn't anything flashy or anything. I kind of ran out of black brick as I was building, but it goes to show you that, you know, with the ability of flight, you'll be able to build anywhere you want in dream world thank you all so much for watching though we hope you enjoyed today's video we might do some more you know floating base builds in the future maybe you know have our hand at making like a little death star from star wars but these are just some simple you know base ideas that you can use and you know a way that you can make your base kind of stand out a lot in dream world you can make an awesome base on the ground but if you make you know a massive base in the air that's something that's really going to catch people's eyes. Again, just a quick reminder that uh, in the description, there is our, the link to DreamWorld's website where you can download the free trial for the game or purchase the game in early access. Either way, we hope to see you all in DreamWorld soon. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with future videos like this one. And we hope you all have an amazing Wednesday night, everybody. Have a good one and see you next time. Bye, dreamers.